Okay, hi, um, this is a uh, quick video to get you introduced to Power BI. Um, there's another video that walks you through the Power BI lab. Um, Dr. Bergowska made that. Um, you'll tell she's not me, um, but I think uh, that should help you get a really good introduction uh, to the topic because you can walk through and click all the buttons and uh, do things. So this is just a general overview to the software. So Power BI is an interactive data visualization tool. Um, its main competitor is Tableau, which you may have also heard of. Um, I think they're actually quite similar. And if you learn how to use one, you can easily learn how to use the other. Um, I've heard them described as Coke and Pepsi. So, you know, some people really like one and hate the other, but at their core, they're kind of the same thing. Um, that said, um, one of the things that makes Power BI different, I don't know about better, is that it's integrated into the Microsoft Office platform, which means you can pull your data from Excel. Your output can easily go to PowerPoint and Word documents and all those kind of things. So um, if you find yourself um, living in a Microsoft environment, you might actually um, like that a little bit better. There we go. Um, anyway, um, like I said, some people like Power BI, some people prefer Tableau, um, but what both of them are, are very simple, um, fairly easy to use tools. By now, you've probably used uh, ggplot in the other uh, visualization lab. And assuming you have, um, you'll wonder why we don't just use Power BI. Um, well, it turns out Power BI can't do all of the things that ggplot can do. But the things that Power BI can do, it does very well, very quickly and easily. And like I said, it's a good thing. Um, for those of you that this might be your last experience with data science, maybe you want to go off and become a master of Power BI. Um, there are different visualization uh, certifications from Microsoft, from other companies. And, and if you get kind of that sticker on your resume, um, there are certainly jobs for people who are good at Power BI. If you want to talk to me about that, I'd be happy uh, to talk through the options. Um, so data visualization um, is the idea that we're going to take data, often in the form of a spreadsheet, um, and turn it into graphs, pictures, charts, um, all those kind of things. Um, ideally, it would be something that you could do fairly quickly. You can just play. You can look at all the variables against all the other variables. So unlike more targeted, focused model building analysis, um, the kind of stuff you do in a regular stat class, data visualization is really meant to give you um, just a really quick overview. If you can make a scatter plot and go, hey, that looks like a line, or hey, as the one goes higher, the other one goes higher, that can be really useful, even if you haven't done a more complete analysis of it. Um, Power BI, um, like I said, it's from Microsoft. It comes in a variety of different forms from the free one, Power BI Desktop, which you can install on your computer very easily. Um, the other ones are often embedded within Office products. So if you have Office 365 at the various levels, um, you can do that. You can see the one version costs $5,000 um, for a company uh, to get that software. So we're going to use, I'm going to use Power BI Desktop, <clears throat> but uh, we have um, I don't remember which one it is, premium built into the virtual desktop and the Office 365 package that you can get. So whatever version of Power BI you use, they all mainly work the same. Um, sometimes the interface is a little bit different. Um, the other thing I'm going to do right now is just walk very quickly through a variety of the different charts and graphs that Power BI makes. Um, you know, of course, it's easy to make lots of graphs, but if you make the wrong one, it's going to give you useless information or worse, misleading information. So um, one chart that we make a lot is a line chart. Um, it just makes a bunch of data points connected by a straight line. Um, it's similar to a scatter plot, but because it's connected, um, it gives you a little bit different sense of what's going on. And usually there's only one value for each X value. Um, so it's a graph of a function, if you want to think about your algebra days. Um, it's really good to use uh, for time series data. And of course, in business, in a lot of corporate environments, time series data is exactly what you have. You want to look at the sales figures over time, your inventory over time, um, whatever it is. If we look at weather data or CO2 over time, any of those kind of things, um, this kind of chart can be really useful. You can stack those together and make what they call an area chart, which is just several line charts on top 
And in this case, you can easily see, hey, whatever orange is, it is uh, doing more. This is actually comparing three different tools. So Power BI is the yellow one, and you can see that it's losing to Tableau um, in overall usage up till 2019. Uh, Power BI has actually gone up since then because of how Microsoft has been marketing it and packaging it within Office 365. Um, but again, your eye very quickly looks at it and says orange is on top, yellow is in the middle, blue is on the bottom, except for that one little patch where blue popped above. Of course, you also know about bar charts um, that you can use to show counts of things um, or measures of averages or sums of individual variables. Of course, column charts are very similar. Um, of course, a histogram is a fancy version of a column chart where you would uh, make bins and combine things. This is just a bar chart looking over uh, different years. Combo charts are where you combine a line chart and a column chart. Um, stats people, data people, we think these are busy and hard to see, but man, is it good at getting a lot of information in there very quickly. So I don't want to poo-poo it, and Power BI does a good job of making it. Um, the same is true for pie charts. Those of us in statistics, we think pie charts are actually kind of dumb. Um, they're often uh, bad for your eye as you look at it. Can you figure out which wedges are bigger? Certainly in this graph, you can see the pink one is the biggest. Um, but, you know, between yellow, blue, and slate, whatever that third color is, um, <clears throat> you can see that. The other thing is it includes that the thing you're splitting up is a pie, that there is something that there's 100% of, and you can divide it up. It'll make a chart of anything else, but a pie does it. We actually prefer, rather than a pie chart, a donut chart, which just cuts out the middle because we think that's a little bit easier on the eye. Um, I don't know. I think it's better if you have a lot of skinny slices. Um, so here you can see how kind of the different ones uh, go down. I don't like little arrows. I think they're funny. And again, what you want is you want your eye to easily look at it and go, oh, the green one is half, right? That's really useful. But looking at those smaller ones, you know, pink versus orange versus yellow, um, it's trickier. Another variation of this is a gauge chart, which looks like a spotometer. And again, for the kind of things you might want to look at, where you want to compare minimums and maximums, um, looking at key performance indicators, looking at stock prices, things like that, um, having this dashboard um, as a gauge um, can be really useful. You can use color for a couple of useful things as well. Um, one that's related to that, but a little bit different, is a funnel chart. This is often useful when you have something where there is some sort of um, trickle down or filtering of uh, customers or products as you go through. So one example of where we use a funnel at Truman is looking at uh, prospective uh, undergraduate students. So you could imagine, we can imagine um, all of the senior uh, high school students and some number of them have had contact from Truman. So we sent them a view book. Um, they're on one of our mailing lists. Um, they did certain uh, scores on the ACT in certain regions. So if you have a good ACT score in Missouri, um, you get on our mailing list. If you contacted us back, that's a subset of those. Uh, maybe a few people who weren't there kind of fall into the funnel. But for the most part, uh, you shrink down. And you can imagine the ones who are really serious, they come to campus, they apply the ones who get accepted, and then finally, the ones who actually enroll at Truman and show up in August. And so we can think of that as a funnel. And if you look at that chart, um, it's really easy to look at. Um, the same thing is true for other sorts of marketing, um, how many leads you have, uh, how many clicks you got on your web page, um, all those. You can imagine Amazon, how many people show up at the page, who looks for a thing, maybe they're comparing prices in a store versus adding it to the cart versus actually purchasing it. So a funnel chart can be really good for what it's good for. And again, Power BI makes them very quickly. Um, scatter charts, of course, you know what those are. Um, we could put a regression line on it, all those kind of things. Um, bubble charts are scatter plots where you add a third and even a fourth variable. So they're good when you don't have a ton of points, but you can use size as a third variable and color as a fourth variable. Um, we'll talk about Gapminder a little bit later, which does this very, very well for public health data. Um, waterfall charts are often used for stock prices, um, interest rates, those kind of things where you can see the dynamic changes to a variable. Um, or you could look at how different states uh, correlate, uh, which states you're having a big market share in or whatever. Um, ribbon charts uh, do a similar thing, but they... Um, look at ranks or uh, changes. Again, we in statistics, we don't really care for these, but um, certainly there are settings where a ribbon chart is a great tool. 
of course, maps are great. And one of the magical things about Power BI is how quickly and easily it can make states. If you have an Excel chart that has, you know, two letter abbreviations of all the states, you can immediately put those dots onto a map. Um, of course, maps are misleading in different ways because, right, California has a lot of people. Montana is bigger, but has way fewer, but your eye kind of goes to those big ones. Um, whatever this chart is looking at, um, you can see that uh, California, Texas, and Florida, maybe that is just a population map as you do that. You can put other graphs on top of it, like a heat map, like a weather map, um, and do that and put other kind of geographic data on it. Again, one of the magical things in Power BI is if you have uh, uh, latitude and longitude lines or GPS data, you can very quickly make these kind of graphs. Um, you can color by other kind of the data sets. Uh, these are called chloropreps, which is a color map. Um, and you can do that, or you can add them into regions and do things like that. Um, you can add bubbles on top. Again, I think they start to get a little bit confusing as you do that. Um, a couple other maps that you might see. Um, decomposition trees, that's the idea that you might have an interactive graph where I can click on the bar chart and it'll expand out. So for instance, for a certain segment of my market, can I expand it out and see um, how my customers vary regionally for product number three? Um, how does the balance of men and women, rich or poor, um, people who purchase other things? And you can kind of double click and again, zoom in on uh, one idea. And again, Power BI does that pretty easily. We won't talk about that in this class, but it's not hard to do. Um, influencer charts, um, which again talks about components. Um, and finally, tree maps or mosaic plots where we um, kind of can make these rectangles that kind of give you a sense of how different segments might break up. Okay, so that is um, sort of the introduction to just a million different kinds of maps and the idea of Power BI. Let's go into Power BI. And 